Hello and welcome to the Late Night Veteran Show. Tonight we um going to be talking to Joe and Dion from the PTSD camp and we're also going to bring in Andy Barnes for a chat and also Alex Eversfield. Um, my name's Darren Edmondson, known as Pembrokeshire Patriot. So I'm just waiting for a couple of people to come on and comment in the chat. Um, also, guys, we were supposed to have on Aiden, um, Aiden tonight. Uh, Aiden was uh, a guy uh, that joined NYP and um, that fought against ISIS. So his story will be revealed. He was also on a TV program. Um, so, yeah, it'd be really interesting to get his story out there. He was saved. Andy Barnes is in. Hello, Andy Barnes. I'll bring you in on a second. So, um, yeah, with the story with Aiden, he was sentenced to one year in jail for terrorist, um, terrorist allegations. Um, and he's still on lifetime terrorist watch. Aiden joined the NYP and fought against ISIS and was jailed for one year, but ended up serving five years. He was on a TV program, Ross Kemp. Um, so his story will be revealed soon. So if you're, if you're on this live, guys, share to your page and see if we can get as many people as we can. I've got Andy Barnes on at the minute. I'm waiting for Joe and Dion. Andy, whilst you're not in the show at the minute, can you just message Joe uh, to come on so I can bring her on as well? I'm going to bring you on it very soon. So the late night show, the late night veteran show starts tonight. It was supposed to be last night, Friday, 9 p.m., but it got postponed. Um, so it's going to be every Friday, 9 p.m. If you'd like to um, apply for the show, drop the late night, drop a message to our team at the late night veteran show. And you can share your stories with us every Friday, 9 p.m. Uh, this is our first show, so uh, we're probably not going to get many people on tonight, but I think it's a great idea. Get veterans on, and uh, we need to promote the PTSD camp in Bath as well, which was run by Joe and Dion. So, guys, we have three people online who's uh, just drop us a message and say hello so I could see your names. And uh, don't forget to share this live and like our page. Um, Andy, are you still in, mate? Just give it a couple of seconds, guys. For it's coming up. Who's on? There's a couple of people on. Guys, just say hello and uh, where you're from, where you're watching from. Uh, I'm just gonna. So we've got Jason Myers. Hi, I'm watching. Aiden is a good friend of mine. J uh, Jenny from Leeds. Hi, guys. How are you? Hope you're well. We've got five people on now. Don't be afraid to drop us a message and ask any question. So on tonight's show. I'm going to repeat myself again. On tonight's show, we're going to interview Joe and Dion Drayson from the PTSD Camp Bath. I'm going to try and promote that that camp. It's it's, a, it's such a brilliant camp, and um, it's it's uh, funded by the donations from the people. They don't get much help. So these guys have helped me when I was suffering mental health. I visited the camp. The camp is absolutely free to go and stay and get some respite. The guys there are absolutely brilliant and a good bunch of people. Uh, they, they technically saved my life. So my mental health was really, really bad. I reached out to them and they've helped me massively. So there is a Facebook group, guys, if you want to join, called um, PTSD Camp Bath Veterans and Families. So please join that group. And just remember to answer every question in that group. Um, so I'm going to bring on Andy Barnes, I, um, Jimmy the Hat, I could see that you've just joined. Jimmy is a great guy. I met him at the camp as well previously. So let's bring in Andy Barnes. Right, bear with me a second, guys. Oh, Andy's not on at the minute. I'm going to bring in Alex then. Let's see if we can add Alex. Alex Eversfield. Interested in what kind of work they do and the PTSD camp, and uh, a lot of uh, good work's been done. And uh, it's, it's always interesting to hear um, the the kind of diverse range of uh, people that Joe and Dion have helped, and uh, you know whatever work they're they're possibly going to do in the future, how they're going to get funding because that's always an issue with charities and charitable causes. Absolutely. 
Well, thanks, thanks for coming on the show. Um, just, just while we're on that note, like you said, um, the PTSD camp BAP isn't funded by the government. It's all uh, through donations for people from people themselves. And uh, I'd like to promote that camp because they've uh, effectively saved my life when I was suffering in, in mental health. Um, so I'm just going to go through a couple of comments. Um, evening, Jenny says, Jimmy the Hat. Jason Myers, hi, Jimmy. Hugs from Jenny. Um, so, Alex, did you say it? I didn't know, um, but no. I'm, I'm familiar with people who uh, are yeah, cool. yeah, very close to them. I know. Um, suffer uh, a lot of mental anguish um, because essentially one in three people in the UK will go through some kind of uh, mental health illness, whether it will be um, a more temporary set or um, more more prolonged. And and the thing is, it's uh, it's not really talked about much, even though one in three, it's essentially, let's say, uh, equivalent to the rates of cancer in this country, yet it's not yeah. got the same clout that, say, cancer has, for example, as mental health. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree on that. Like, um, when I was suffering my, my mental health, I, uh, I I didn't feel I could trust the system. There wasn't much help out there for me. And uh, I, I reached out to the PTSD camp back in 2019. I went there for Remembrance Parade on Sunday. And since then, I've, I've draw, been drawn to the camp and I've, I've been there about five, six times now. I've helped support the camp, raise money for the camp. We did a 10-mile hike for Hero from Pembroke Dock to Tembe to raise money for a 98-year-old World War II D-Day veteran that was served a no-fault eviction notice. Um, so we did the 10-mile hike, and between the GoFundMe, uh, the PayPal, and collections, we I think we raised around £12,000 for him. Now, Alfie was released that money, uh, I believe, within the last week, and he's managed to find himself a, a new home. Now, I think that that should be down to the government, should help that nobody at that age, 98 years old, especially a World War II D-Day veteran, should be saved a no-fault eviction notice. What's, what's your opinion on that? Well, the, the trouble is um, the Tories will generally um, side with landlords over... Uh, letters, renters, whatever, whatever you want to call them, tenants, essentially. And and this is the trouble. Um, you can understand the law regards no-fault evictions because there will be bad tenants. But the mm. trouble with that is it also, unfortunately, backs bad landlords. And there's people who essentially have no contracts. And if we look at uh, no-fault evictions, for example, there's... Um, a lot of people who essentially rent without a contract. I know someone personally who um, had rent raised by 25 quid a week. And That's because they're not though, in a contract, essentially, they can um, do that. Um, even with a contract, um, it essentially means you're not without, you're without security, you're without a roof over your head, and the council is not always there to pick up the pieces. And essentially, this is why we've got people, so many people in this country, British people, whether they're um, veterans or not, uh, essentially homeless or in temporary accommodation because the contracts are not significantly strong enough for the tenant. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just came across this story and I was thinking, you know, he's 98-year-old World War II D-Day veteran, 98 years old, you know, been in World War II and he's got some an amazing stories, which, which I'm going to cover in a minute. Um, some amazing stories from when he was in Normandy. So when when he uh, uh, his first tour in Norm well his tour in Normandy, they had uh, these wooden gliders, and uh, he jumped out of this glider and he said his adrenaline was pumping. It's on one of my lives that I did. His adrenaline was pumping, and he, he was going down in this glider. And when the glider hits the floor, it just shatters to pieces. You know, so like he he had, he had landed, and he said that. Uh, you know, he landed straight in the in the in the thick of it, and he just said it was it was unreal, it was unbelievable. And he, he, he this this guy Alfred actually got shot uh, shot in the face and it skimmed his face. And uh, when um, when he, he was like uh, after everything was going on, he was told to go to the to the med center. And the meds where really he had to go to go to this med center, he had to walk down this alleyway across the fields where where the uh, where the Germans went. And um, he was petrified, and he he, wanted, he had to make a decision. He said, "If I leave my rifle behind, I can 
hold my hands hostage, so I'm not a threat. But if I don't bring my rifle with me to the med center, then I'm gonna I'm gonna be in I'm gonna be in shit street anyway. But he decided to take his rifle, went to the med center, never never come under combat on the way, and uh, he had the, he had it wrapped up and he went back out there. But he actually in the end had to be casualized home due to his injury because the gangrene and everything from when he was shot in the face. But it's an incredible story and an incredible live I did when I went to visit Alfie with Joe and Kyle. But yeah, some some amazing stories. Um, so I see Andy Barnes is in and he's coming in. Andy, can we bring you in? Is that okay? Let's see if we can bring Andy in. Oh, he's left. I'm trying to... Joe and Dion's supposed to be coming on, but I can't see them on. If um, Julie, my admin's on, I can see if you can uh, if you can give Joe Joe a message and say, can you go and watch the live? Send them the link because uh, I want to get that. Sorry. I want to get them on to, um, to promote the camp. Uh, yeah. I'm just waiting for them, really. So, how's your day been, mate? Or you been? Uh, I've only just you? woken up. Uh, it's this is a bit like having um, seasonal affective disorder because of the uh, dark and cold of winter. And a lot of people, um, I think, even if they don't have, say, depression during the uh, winter months, will find this. It's it's like basically winter is uh, essentially a depressing month for so many uh, people starting in December and yeah. then um, January and February. You got to you, we've got to think like we are a fairly able-bodied men and yeah. yet we have to ask ourselves is the government looking after our people and the answer is clearly no. Whether it no, be a 98 not, veteran a 98 year old veteran who essentially is made homeless or old people who are shivering to death choosing between food and fuel in this country or the the families around christmas so many of them who won't be able to afford christmas presents for their own kids at this time of year so it is you have to essentially ask what is going on with essentially one of the most wealthy countries in the world where so many people live below the poverty line and yeah. although the poverty line is structured in such a way statistically you can move people across it it is actually quite minuscule to what degree people's lives at the bottom say the bottom 10 or 20 percent are bettered in this country by whatever government there is yeah yeah that, that brings me on to something else not not everybody's going to agree but when you've got um thousands hundreds of a hundred thousand of um, illegal migrants coming in across the border and we've got over 30,000 veterans homeless on the streets and uh, 260,000 homeless of our own now should, shouldn't we be put first what's, what's your opinion on that well unfortunately there's no legal president uh, there's no legal president set and therefore essentially because we're under such um courts and agreements such as the uh, un convention on human rights uh, and um rules of the european court of human rights as well uh, certain shall we say people who uh, have traveled here for the economic benefits of britain illegally i may add they essentially can be put either as an equal or first to say veterans and our own poor and impoverished people so this is essentially there's no legal um priority set for veterans or the general british populace as a whole and essentially this this is where it is the lack of political pressure leads to a lack of legal pressure and leads to a lack of legislation that protects our own people and because um, for whatever government of whatever color they do not put our people first this is essentially the situation that we find ourselves in and and of course veterans who are suffering um, from mental health problems will be a part of that and a large part of that because as we know roughly a third to a quarter of all homeless people are ex-veterans or, or ex-soldiers sorry veterans because of course they are uh, veterans and have served in the armed forces so unfortunately it's because of politics and not a lot of people like politics but the fact of the matter is because there is a lack of political pressure leading to a lack of legal pressure and legislation that protects our people by law essentially the government can do this and they can yeah. do it legally. 
I think I think you explained that very well, and uh, that was the best way of putting it forward. Um, just just give me a second there, Alex. Um, Julie, um, you're saying there's uh, we got problems with the sound. How is the sound at the minute? Can you just uh, drop a comment and let us know? And did you get in contact with Joe? I can see Warren is um, Warren's watching live. Warren, if you can drop a message in, maybe I can bring you in and talk to uh, Joe and Dion from the old phone. Um, so I'm going to try and bring Warren in now. Let's have a look if he's still watching. No, nope, he's gone. Uh, Tom Handley, are you with Joe and Dion? Can I try and bring you in? Let's try that. Obviously, we're going to be a bit of rough around the edges at the minute because uh, it's okay now, says Agnes. Carry Owen, it's good. Sorry, it's it's good. My end. Well said, Alex Eversfield. So Andy Barnes. Then. Sorry, Andy's back then. Andy's back. Yeah, I'm going to try and bring Andy in, but he refused last time. He's gone again. He, I think he keeps dropping in and out. Um, I we're think there some... is a general problem with the internet these days. Mine's keep going down, but I thought it was because of some demolition work nearby. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, Joe's not on, Eddie, I couldn't get in contact, but anyway, I'm going to talk about um, Aidan, uh, what's his last name, his last name, uh, oh god, anyway, Aidan, Aid, we're going to have a veteran on called Aidan, he joined the NYP and he went to go and fight ISIS, um, Aidan was 25 new comments, Jesus, they come in quick, Joe and Dion are busy, okay, are they coming on, I messaged here, um, so, yeah, he he joined NYP and fought against ISIS and he was convicted uh, under terrorist charges for one year in jail. But he actually served five years. Uh, oh, hey, there he is. There's Edo. He's in. Edo, I'm going to bring you on very shortly. Let me just explain this. So, Edo um, served actually five years in jail instead of one. And he was also on the Ross Kemp, one of the Ross Kemp shows whilst he was inside, I believe it was Belmont. So I'm going to bring Aidan in now and uh, um, uh, have a chat with him and uh, see how he's doing. Let me just see if I can locate him. Oh, God. Yeah, he's there. Aidan, you're being invited in. We've got 10 people watching. That's pretty good for the first show. I was going to go live on my page. I've got uh, 40,000 followers, but I want to build this page up, so I'm going to stay live on here. And build this up naturally. Aidan, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Literally just woke up. I know, I've been trying to contact you, but fair play. I'm glad you could make it, mate, because I wanted to get your story out there and your end. Um, I was telling the people how you joined uh, the NYP and fought against ISIS. What, the YPG. Uh, YPG. The YPG, sorry, sorry, my correct. So can you just tell us a bit, about, introduce yourself, Tell us what you've saved, what you've done, uh, that your story, uh, if, if you're awake. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I made a normal lad from Liverpool who was sick of Islamic State ideology and attacking our country, so I decided to go where I, the I ideology think, was breeding and go and fight against them. I think some of us, I think most of us feel the same. So what made you join the YPG? Because they were the only only force at the time that were actually fighting against the Islamic State properly. And when did you join them, Aidan? Um, 2017. 2017. And where did you go from there and where did you get deployed to? Um, went to Iraq and into Syria. Into Syria. So what happened <laughs> when you came back, Aidan? You obviously you flew back up. What happened with the police? Uh, what, what happened when you got um, arrested? Got, really? got, got arrested on the tarmac <clears throat> as soon as me playing landed at Liverpool. Um, <clears throat> got talked to a black site where no one knew where there was for a couple of weeks. Got interrogated by Council Terror. Um, but no, no one knew yeah, who he was. You, you weren't allowed to make nah, a phone call. He was remanded. Nah, wow. No, nah, no. Nah, nah. So that's, um, your, that's your rights going straight out the window, isn't it? And then, um, yeah, ended up in the HSU in Balmash. Wow. So, when, um, how long did the court case take, and, and what, what were your, uh, what allegations were made against um, you? Um, I think, I think it was like two, two years it took to get me convicted because it, it was um, the third trial because there was three separate juries. 
Wow. Um, so the first uh, the ho- um, hung juries and stuff like that, Tom. Wow. Yeah. So, so you was, was I believe you were sentenced to one year and ended up saving five. Yeah. So I I was on another stupid little charge as well, but the the one year sentence changed to a two year sentence because of the legislation changed. They're yeah. pretty Patel done, and, and then and then due because that legislation changed, then that really? meant I had to sit me parole. And wow. just was to, that to get related out to Shamima Begum? Uh, because, of course, uh, if you remember the case around Shamima Begum joining ISIS, and of course, uh, we know ISIS are a terrorist organization, uh, did they come down heavy on you because of legislation either introduced or government action because of that? I'm not too sure. I think they just come down heavy on me to make an example of people fighting against Islamic State. Um, to, just a quick question. Um, I, I, if I'm stood correct, aren't you on now the terrorist uh, prevent or watch list for the rest of your life now? And, and no, 90, 94 years left on me, normal license. 94 ten, years left. Um, I've got a 10 year part four notification. Wow. So I imagine you'll be interrogated all the time, you'll be watched, your Facebook's being watched. As we're probably speaking now, you'll be yeah. watched left, right, and centre. How is that affecting your mental health, Aidan? <laughs> it's not good, Lee. No, I can, I, I've, I've known you for, for, for a bit now, and uh, you're, um, if you don't mind me saying, you're a bit up and down, and this is really stressing you out. You've done your time. I don't even mm. think you should have been convicted. I've done, more than, I've done a lot more than my time, mate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's what I'm trying to say. I think your story needs to be put out there, and um, I think what you did was very brave and incredible, and I, I class you as a hero, so I, I take my hat off to you. No, um, you were I'm, just, I'm, definitely, you were just, I'm definitely, definitely not a hero. <laughs> Well, in my books, you are broke. You are, and and just just to let people know that's watching and to yourselves, we we there's a group called PTSD Camp Bath, and um, I think if you're struggling with mental health or you're struggling with PTSD, get in touch, guys. Um, you know, we've got a chat group. Join the chat group. We're having lots of laughs and banter. This show, as it progresses, there'll be a lot of banter and a lot of laughs and a lot of stories telling. Um, so, how was Belmont, Shaden? Yeah, rough. <laughs> rough is it really that bad? Yeah. yeah. So how many hours a day were you locked up? Twenty-four. Twenty-four hours a day. What they bring your meals? It. It must yeah, have been. Yeah, that's so full. When um, I got when I got t- took off the HSU and put into segregation, I was in segregation for over two years. Wow, and that must have affected you real bad, man. Just yeah, because from coming off a plane just, and being put in that situation, it just it's mind blowing. <laughs> It just I I isolate you, and so they they were doing systematic systematically trying to isolate me. So they were stopping phone calls. Um, I I sent you them photos the other week where they know where they chose about them stopping me mail and stopping yeah. incoming letters and stuff like that. Right, I'm sorry sorry to interrupt there, guys. Dar- I got a message from Tom Handley. It says Darren, Joe, and Dean are waiting to be added and can't hear or see nothing from the show. Um, is, is Warren there or can I invite him from Warren's phone uh, invite Warren in or you Tom and they can talk on your your phone is that is that possible Tom Alex um, could just trying to keep the conversation flowing really what do you yeah, think of what, um, I, I was going to ask Ado um, Aidan did you meet anyone famous that we might know because of course Belmarsh is one of the leading uh, prisons for uh, basically jailing people suspected of uh, terrorism. Uh, did you meet anyone famous in Belmos or, or or know of anyone famous near you? So you mean like, so you mean Tommy? Well, uh, did, I was thinking did, did Tommy, like, I was uh, using there, but I didn't meet him in jail. Uh, yeah, um, th- there may be other like uh, more secure people. I don't know, for example, where Adja Below is, is, is jailed. You would have thought no, he would be I, in a, I was on a, a high, I was on a high uh, secure but... unit and, and there, were, there wasn't many people. I, did, was, I was on there with Davin Osborne, which is probably one of the only other lads that was in there on the tenders yeah. of my friends. Yeah, um, and um, do you feel like you're a victim of, say, British uh, foreign uh, policy? Like, for example, certain people who fight ISIS... Uh, should be recognised as legal groups rather than, you know, terrorist organisations. I, I think I think that I I think that um, 
the white the white PG, I won't I won't consider them to be a terrorist organization or they're, they're not even a legal group in this country. They're not even a banned organization under UK law. Yeah. Yes, of course. Um, there, there's been cases, for example, where um, they've tried to take uh, Scottish people to court for chanting at Rangers matches, for example, supporting the YCV, which is a feeder organisation to either the UDA or UVF. And the thing is, they couldn't because the YCV in itself is not a terrorist organisation that is um, recognised by the uh, British government, member of the UK. Uh, UVF or UDA, it is considered terrorism. So um, the British foreign policy um, and domestic policy, for that matter, speaking on terrorism, do, do you find it's it's not especially clear as to who is um, who is uh, classified as a terrorist organisation and who is not? Um, I haven't, to be fair, I haven't really looked into it that much. I haven't really been long out of jail and I don't really go online looking at stuff, to be fair. But do you think the government could do more, for example, to clarify who is? I think, I think the government could do do a hell of a lot more. The government could start by start by tackling terrorism itself. You know what I mean? So they could actually try and do something so that it wouldn't be down to people like me to go overseas and fight. Now, yeah, do you absolutely. think that's a, a foreign policy um, or domestic policy? Would would uh, you know? Is it home or away? Do you think that needs uh, more focus? Um, I think so. Yeah. Probably. So I, think, I, think need, I think they need to make the definition between actual, you know, so people that the people that like a freedom fighters like myself and actual terrorists. Because to, to, lab, lab. to label me a terrorist is, is just, just a right, joke. So, sorry, guys, to interrupt. I think we've got Dion there now, guys. Welcome, Dion, from the PTSD camp. Dion, do you want to introduce yourself and to say what the camp's all about and what you guys do? <laughs> Yeah, I'm Spartacus. <laughs> now, obviously, I'm Dion uh, from uh, PTSD Camp Bath. And, hey. uh, any vet who needs help, anyone who's suffering from PTSD, come on down. We'll give you. We'll do our utmost to give you a hand and help you and sort the right people out, lead you in the right direction. Yeah. And, and I, I, I can about to that as well, Dion. As you know, I was suffering mental health. I was going through issues as well. And you guys have been there from 2019 when I first came down a Remembrance Day. And you've always had my back and always looked out for me, made sure I was there. You know, and uh, yeah, it's, it's like a big family there. And when, when you go and spend some time as Aiden, as you will find out when you go down there, when you're there, you, there's, a, you, there's like a weight on your shoulder. When you go to this camp, the weight on your shoulders have just gone, mate. It's it's brilliant. You've got so much support, so much love and back in it. It's it's unreal. Oh, appreciate it, man. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah. so basically, I I want to touch on the PTSD camp, guys, because um the 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 government doesn't help fund this camp. It's all down to donations, and there's a page called um, PTSD Camp Families and Veterans. Join the page, and if you can make a small donation. Uh, the Dion's links there to help fund the camp and we're also coming out with these membership cards five pound membership card which will give you access to the camp it's only five pounds for the year and uh, that will help for the new project um, that they're working on which is for another bunkhouse for the veterans to stay in for free and uh, Joel always cooks the veterans uh, meals which, are, which they don't pay for and this is all run off funding and donations so if anybody can please help and support them that'd be absolutely amazing so yeah so yeah. hey aiden when yeah. did you uh when did you get released from jail um february this year february this year no cool cool cool, cool. Oh. i'm trying to bring um andy barnes in but it's not letting me bring him in for some reason. So, um, what's the future plans for the camp, uh, Dion? I know you're going to be. Can you hear us? Yeah, I okay, can, mate. I've just had a police helicopter. Buzz oh, off. yeah, you, you've uh, always got police helicopters going on. Do you want to share the story, uh, uh, Dion? What happened to the camp when they come and raided you and held you at gunpoint and and stuff? Do you want to do you want to share a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I'll go through it briefly. Yeah, we, you know, one, I think it was a Monday morning or something like Yeah, <laughs> early hours of Monday morning, we were raided. 
um, the whole my whole driveway, the road outside my driveway's uh, three hundred meters long. Uh, was blocked with police vans. You name it, we had it. Uh, fast response vehicles, attack dogs, sniffer dogs, everything, and it, all my fields and that were. They opened up all the gates, and they, they, we had police cars and vans, and probably probably somewhere in the region of like a hundred, hundred and fifty vehicles on our farm, and they they, wow. they just raided, and they it was it was all terrorist defences apparently. Yeah, yeah they were but, all automated. But, but then ter their terrorist offences now have been dropped, haven't they? You, you've won your case. Yeah, no, we've got no further action. Just got no further action a few weeks back, and. Um, we we received a letter last week actually, what said no further action unless something else or something new is found. Next, something else comes see. to light, yeah. And, and that, and, yeah, they give when, you when you got raided, didn't they hold hold you at gunpoint and and uh, they kill a few animals and they they blew up the toilet doors that the the, the people donated yeah. helped donate to to the camp. Yeah, they did all that. They, yeah, yeah, they didn't need to because I gave them. When they arrested me at gunpoint and that, I gave them all the keys to every building, everything. They didn't need to, but it was almost like it was a training exercise as well as what they were doing, where they just blew off doors and things like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, they used they yeah. used that as a as a point of a, an exercise, I think. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. But, um, go on. And then some of the obviously we had a, a big our big dog here, Corky, which had. had some puppies because um, they didn't let anyone on the land to look after her and that at the time then uh, most of the puppies died yes yeah, so they didn't feed you, or, or anything like that it, so, uh, it, it's not it's, and, and it was a big impact on your family as well because your family live with you don't they in, in separate yeah. uh, buildings and uh, they had to be escorted off the premises they didn't yeah. contact you uh, they didn't allow them to speak to you so that was worrying for them. Nobody knew what was going on. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely shocking. And they were following you around, weren't they? When they were off the land, obviously me and Joe were locked up for a few days. And then, <laughs> yeah. then they released us, but they didn't let us back on the land. So we had to go into a, a hotel up the road, um, rent that, and then just wait, just wait out. Really. We were just waiting to get arrested and... Cut yeah. it off, but they didn't find what they were looking for. What yeah. were they looking for? Uh, explosives, semi automatic weapons. Yeah, it was, it was all a load of bullshit, all false allegations, wasn't it? Really, um, yeah. but that wasn't that wasn't the, the the start of your harassment, Dion and Joe, was it? Um, when you were when you had to stay in a hotel and you wasn't allowed back to the camp. They were they were waiting outside, weren't they? Watching you, watching you oh, every move. It's just, it's just cool. I, I jumped in a car just to go look to the shop. I had two or three cars following us. When I got to the shop, there was, you know, cars were already there. Oh, it was, it was fucking shocking. Fucking shocking. Yeah. We had trackers on our vehicles, see? They'd, they'd somehow put little trackers on our vehicles. So wherever we went, they turned up. But they didn't turn up behind us. Although they followed us, so they, they'd already be in front of us. So that's, that's how I knew we had trackers and that, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's harassment, isn't it? And I think it's uh, about time you, you've got a case together and start suing them because the yeah. damages uh, and, and the costs it's caused you staying in hotels, where your family's well, staying. At the moment, we're pushing for uh, authentication of, of the uh, warrant. Yeah, good. Good search warrant and that because we got search warrants and arrest warrants which aren't signed or anything. No, no, uh, there's a lot no of false allegations, no there. signature. So, yeah, we're chasing that one at the moment. Yeah. And it, it's quite a shame, really, isn't it? Because all you guys have ever done is, uh, is, is put your hearts on the line for veterans and look out for veterans, and they're targeting a camp like that, which, which is absolutely yeah. disgusting, really. And um, they should be focusing on the uh, other routes and other problems yeah. that we have in this I mean, UK. To be honest, we're, we're still being harassed now. We we still get a police helicopter. I know, you know, I know Joe. Once, twice, three times a day. They go over. Uh, the other night, I, I think it was last week, they went over and they shone the spotlight on Joe, who was stood on our doorstep. You know, it, it, it's, it's a joke. It's a fucking yeah. joke. 
And, and I can witness that as well for when I went up there. There must have been four, maybe five times a day a helicopter flies over the camp. Yeah. I mean, and it's just crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. I mean, uh, what do they... F yeah. You hear about... I've just heard that the Canadian government are trying to uh, employ all vets in that so that they can... The vets can work for the government and then the, vet, the, the vets will be sort of looked looked over and watched all the time and i think full of fake promises i think i think all countries are scared of, of like vets they think the biggest threat is like vets uh yeah. hence hence they raided us thought correct well, crazy well it's, it's we great it's great that you've got no favor action yeah it's great that you've got no favor action isn't it you know yeah. because everyone's mind to rest and we all knew that you was innocent because like you say, we, we think you were just used as a training exercise. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I actually believe that. Um, I actually had a police officer come here the other day. Um, nothing, nothing about the camp. He just wanted to interview someone who, who you know, wasn't here at the time and is, hasn't been here for a while. Yeah. Um, and he, I, I got talking to him. I said, you're, you're not going to... I ain't going to tell you anything. I said... You raided us a few years ago, and you're nothing but fucking scum. Just yeah. get in your car and, you know. How, 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 how can you trust the system now? How can you trust them now after what you've done? You're just not going to speak to them, are you? Yeah. yeah you can. Never, never trust the police on that. Look, look, no. look what you've been through, Aidan. Look what you and Dion's been through. It's just, no. it's shocking, isn't it? Never. Don't trust the police, the police, the government, anyone that makes the laws, and none of that. Yeah, Alex, did you hear about the camp story? Did I hear about the guy? I'm not. I'm not aware of this raid. No. Um, oh, well. It doesn't surprise me. Unfortunately, in this country, uh, despite MI5 and MI6 being, you know, world class intelligence operations, it never surprises me how much the intelligence services within this country get it wrong. Yeah. And this, this is what I'm thinking is part of the bigger picture. You got to think like. Whilst we're on the um, issue of uh, what happened with Ado and uh, the PTSD camp, you can see what's gone on. They can let people like Shamima Begum slip out this country to fight for ISIS, who are justifiably a terrorist organisation, yet they will raid yep. a PTSD camp, supposedly along the lines of some kind of terrorist charge. It, I think what what's happened is since... Um, the assassination of Joe Cox, uh, there's been this kind of um, retribution in, in, the, in, the, in the state where they have to have a balance between what they perceive as potential, um, what they would deem right-wing terrorism and Islamic terrorism. Yeah, and th yeah. this, is, this is the trouble with what happened with people in national action, and they were made an example of because there was conspiracy by one national action member to assassinate their local MP. And whether they were a veteran or not, they were clearly deranged. And because Joe Cox has been assassinated and David Amos, yeah. the police have gone into this kind of overkill situation where they're not getting the people who are deranged, potentially violent. They're going for people who uh, are kind of easy targets, who are not likely to cause uh, violence of that kind. And they will overkill because they know that in this country there's there's patriotic movements, uh, including ex-servicemen who are not happy with what's going on. And they potentially fear that that could turn violent. They only have to look at, say, the EDL kicking off on Remembrance Day or, or remnants of that, or national action, for example, because they unfortunately fear anything from what they deem the right, which is anything patriotic, unfortunately. It doesn't even need to be pro-white or pro-military. It's anything with the British flag behind it, they, they seem this person could potentially um, be violent or assassinate even an MP. Now, what takes that back is the assassination of David Amos. It's not talked about as much as uh, the assassination of Joe Cox these days, even though Amos uh, was stabbed to death for political purposes. And the government failed to protect him as it fails to protect... Um, the vast majority of us. Now, if they can't protect someone like David Amos, how can we trust them yeah. to protect you, me, yeah. Yeah. and the rest Everyone. of the people in this country who have yeah. like uh, no political or financial or status significance to this country? 
yeah. You can't. Yeah, okay. If you can't, if they can't protect an MP, and David Amos has been an MP at least since the 90s. I remember being spoofed on a programme called Brass Eye of a made-up drug called Cake. And uh, you can watch, uh, watch it where you actually ask questions about this made-up drug called Cake. So he's at least been an MP since the 90s, around 96, 97. And if a long-standing MP can be assassinated in this country, never mind Joe Cox, because we already have heard about Joe Cox, more over Amos, then surely the intelligence services have failed. They know they failed because they stopped um, certain terrorist plots, but they failed to stop 7-7. So what they did then, not just that, um, the, the last ones that happened in, in London, they all come from the same wing in Belmarsh, where they had, they, they knew that 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 that, um, that jihadi preacher was on the wing, radicalising people on the wing, even the guards regularly spoke about it in Belmarsh, and it was the London Bridge attack, and then I think there was, the, was it Fishmongers Hall or something like that as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. but they, all, they yeah. all come from the same wing in Belmarsh. And this, this is the, the problem, where in America you have a problem with prison gas, uh, whereas uh, people are, are, are tend to be divided along racial cultural lines, such oh, as it is. I'll uh, tell the you Aryan Brotherhood or MS-13, it is, or, it is or racially gangs, segregated. Exactly. Uh, essentially, what you're having is Islamic radicals who are radical, essentially radicalised people in on the outside, and now in prison, radicalising people on the inside of prison. And yet the government seems to think that there's more threat from any kind of patriot, uh, veteran, right wing in inverted commas, um, terrorism than there is from Islamic terrorism, which is not the case. Statistically, it's not the case. There's been there's no uh, there's not been a terrorist organization anywhere near, uh, say, Manchester or 77 since the the bombings uh, that occurred by David Copeland. And that's going back to the 90s when Combat 18 was the main right-wing proponent of mm. um, right-wing terrorism. Yeah. And this is, this is the thing. The police fear that there'll be violence from the right-wing where the vast majority of major terrorism cases have been Islamic terrorists. It's clear there's not been a 7-7 or a Manchester-style bombing by patriots. There's been an assassination by some deranged person who mm. killed Joe Cox. Since then, there's not been anything near that, but there has been an assassination that they don't talk about, about David Amos, and that was by an Islamic radical. Yeah. yeah. We've got a question there, guys, uh, uh, from Bill Judge. Not a question. But yeah, it is a question. Bill Judge, wasn't it ruled that 7-7 was uh, most likely carried out by our government? What's your, what's your views on that? Well, I, I I have heard that the, 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 the London Fire Brigade was doing bomb drills in the London Underground the week okay. the week that the bomb bombs went off. Yeah, well, I, I but, believe so. Yeah, well, I don't yeah. know for a fact. I, yeah. I personally don't think it's a conspiracy by our government. Like, uh, for example, that we we um, we're institutionalised um, in the sense that we we carried out seven seven. On our own thing, there's there's a lot of people who think 9/11 was an inside job. Uh, dancing Israelis, for example, is a meme that you you may see on, uh, for example, Facebook. But the thing is, we knew that we were going to be targeted. So if there was fire brigades and police brigades and uh, ambulance and the NHS um, getting ready for a, a terrorist attack, I don't necessarily see that as a bad or suspicious thing. That's what they should have been doing. If, if there was going to be a terrorist attack, they should have been prepared for it. And there's been investigation after investigations. And, you know, they can say mistakes were made. But the thing is, who are they watching in this country? And who are the police, you know... Um, what's watching people like me, Dion and exactly. Joe? We, we have the most surveilled country in the world. If you look at, for example cameras uh, cctv cameras per head of population is the most within the uk but you have to look at why that is we have had the ira we have had terrorist attacks on our on our land by um either is or islamic terrorism or those kind of people so it's it is justifiable why we've got so many cctv cameras but the trouble is if you get assaulted in this country the police are useless 
it takes something like murder or attempted murder and yeah. your status matters. If an MP got gone. assaulted, they would be on it. I've been assaulted three times and the, and the police have been useless, to be honest. Okay. And it was a lack of CCTV or poor CCTV why the same person could assault me twice and pretty much get away with it. <laughs> and so I've got mixed feelings regard CCTV, but I haven't got mixed feelings regard the police because they do not protect us. The system does not protect us significantly. And the police are, the police are supposed to be there to protect you, and the uh, majority of the people, they don't feel protect, uh, protect, no. uh, protected by the I'll police. Do, do, there's only one pair. There's only there's only like three types of people that the police protect: their own, yeah. Yeah. pedophiles, pedophiles, and, and uh, you know what I mean. And yeah. Scumbags yeah. like that. We know that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, right. It's a bit proven. But it's it's lost. Uh, people have lost lost a lot of faith in the police. And there's a uh, as you know, guys. There's a lot of two tier policing as well, isn't there? You know, we we fly yeah. a British flag up, and it's racist. Yeah. And you can get the these guys go around and fly their. Flag I wasn't. Up. I wasn't. I wasn't allowed to have the union jack on my wall in jail because they said it caused racial offence. That's unbelievable. You live in Britain. You're British. I still, I still you know have, your country. What is racism? What is racism about that? If that's what they want to call, if that's what they want to call racism, then they can call me racist. I should be allowed to hang my flag up. I should be allowed to be proud of my country and, and want okay. to protect my country because we're not being protected by people that's supposed to serve us, and we're paying our tax monies to these people, and it's just it's a waste of money. If you if you tell me, but that essentially reassures you that one thing: you own the flag. Yeah, the fact that other groups cannot find that flag in a comfortable way, akin to how Germans cannot feel proud to be German because of the Second World War, uh, we own that flag. In the end, we are proud to fly that flag. Ima imagine us is, going to their countries and flying our flag. Well, why not? Yeah, I did. exactly. <laughs> you know I, I did. Yeah, but just imagine, just imagine the, the comeback I, from that. I did. I went to their country and flew our flag. <laughs> Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> love it. I love that. So, and guys, we're... go on. The interesting thing about the whole ISIS situation was that we couldn't side with um, the Syrian government because they were committing atrocities, yet, uh, of course, we couldn't side with the rebels against the Syrian government because, of course, some of them were ISIS and some were opposed to each other. So there was anti-ISIS rebellions against Syria. But the only people who were bombing the um, ISIS in that area were the Russians. And the Israelis. And the Israelis. But yeah. uh, unfortunately, is Israelis are like, as we've seen now in the past few days, to kill indiscriminately. More so than the Americans now. It's, it's, it's to the point... Supposedly one of the best intelligence services in the world, i.e. Mossad, yet they have killed three of their own hostages, mistaking them as terrorists. So even wow. the Mossad can't, if you look this up, this I heard it this morning, about six o'clock this morning on CNN, on the BBC, because it could uh, go over to uh, America, that three Israeli hostages that were held by Hamas were killed by the IDF because they didn't understand that they weren't hostile. So if the wow. Israeli government makes that kind of mistake, should we really be funding these kind of people? Because we do, and America does fund Israel billions of dollars and pounds per year. And essentially, that money uh, could be better spent if you're in America on some kind of form of the basic NHS, perhaps mental health services uh, in this country with uh, the NHS. And unfortunately, we're funding Israel to uh, blow up their own people and kill their own people because their intelligence is, is probably just as bad as ours. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. So guys, we've nearly been on for an hour now. Um, the show's only on for an hour a week. So I'm just gonna bring it to, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Gonna bring the show to an end. I know Dion needs to get off, he's busy at the camp as well. Um, just, uh, I just want you to have one last say, Dion, on, on uh, give a shout out to the veterans and and, and that. Just have your last say before you go. Uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks for having me on. Great program. Uh, I've just learned a lot off of what's been said on here. Now there's, a, you know, a lot of stuff that's been said. A lot of stuff's been brought back to my 
forefront of my old brain because uh, I used to fly, fly the Union Jack out in Mosul and that out in Iraq. Brilliant. So, yeah, nice. uh, and Baghdad and places like Fallujah and Ramadi. Yeah, great, so great that, times, so great memories. But for people that are watching that don't know, uh, Dion's ex para and uh, he, he served. How long did you serve, Dion? Well, I did sort of 20 years in the parachute regiment, and then I went to Iraq uh, in the Middle East for 13 years. So wow. Basically Amazing. a soldier out there, you know, just getting paid the proper money. Yeah, Better stuff. money than good what stuff. the MOD paid me. Right, Dion, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to drop you out of the show. Thanks for coming yeah. on and sharing your stories. It's been a pleasure. And uh, hopefully yeah, and we, will see you. we will see you New Year's Eve at the PTSD camp. You will do. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. See you, Dion. See you later, lad. Thank you. But, <laughs> right. If Dion can that, end man. it. Oh. Just need to. You just need to end it, Dion. Hello, Joe. Oh, Joe, Joe, oh, come no, on now. Sorry. <laughs> this is uh, this is Dion's oh, wife. Or should I say Get wife? Later. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> so guys for those of you who are watching uh, that's the story from Aidan and Dion Aidan do you want to have a last uh, have a, have a la your last say before we end the show and thank you for coming on your story is incredible and uh, we're going to share this video so if you have your last say that would be great um, I don't really know what to say to be fair well, it's some trust the government yeah there that's... we go yeah Obviously, guys, you hear Aidan's story, um, incredible story. I'm sure he's got more to share. We, it won't be the first time on this show. The show will be on every Friday, 9 p.m., so tune in. And if you're watching, share this page, and don't forget to join the group uh, PTSD Camp for Families and Veterans. Uh, the admins and mods uh, will allow you in if you answer all the questions. If you don't answer the questions, you'll have uh, a decline with feedback saying answer the questions remember to answer the questions um so i'm gonna take uh aiden out the the chat now and have a chat with alex and uh, i'll see you shortly thanks for coming on aiden been yeah, a pleasure take it easy mate nice to be having on mate. thank you Cheers. 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 what's up andy barnes is he about i don't know i was trying to bring him in but he's uh, he's not online we, uh, yeah, he's missed a gig today as well. You paid yeah, uh, about so twenty-five quid in tickets, man. Oh no, I bet he's devastated. But uh, uh, one one last thing, Alex. Thanks for your information. Um, you seem to be uh, you seem to be highly intelligent and you know your stuff. So you will, this won't be the last time on the show. If you'd accept an invitation back, it would be an absolute Thank pleasure. You. And uh, I, I'm going to keep you on till the end anyway. I just give it a couple more minutes. Um, so, guys, for those of you who are watching, this is the Late Night Veteran Show every Friday. If you'd like to apply for the show, please drop the Late Night Veterans Show message and the admins and mods will get back to you. You can share your stories. We can interview you. And, um, yeah, if you'd like to uh, join the PTSD Camp page and help support them, that would be fantastic. I'd like a big shout-out to Julie and Leslie, the mods that are on tonight. They do an incredible job running my pages and the PTSD camp. They help out there as well. So it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, thanks for coming on the show, uh, Alex. It's been a pleasure having you and I can't wait to meet you. And I'm sure you've got more information to share with the people in the future live show. So this is the Late Night Veteran Show and I'm going to leave it there, guys. Love and leave you. Thank you. Cheers, Good night. Alex.